Hello, welcome back. Last time we set up our example blog with Sanity and was able to create and display a couple of sample posts. Let's flesh it out a bit more today. This is what it's going to look like after the next 15 or 20 minutes. I'm going to show you how to add extra fields to the Sanity Studio, how to make more customized queries, and an easier way of displaying the images. So let's get started. I want to be able to display a short description in my post below the title. At the moment, we don't have an option to do that yet. So let's give ourselves that option. It's so easy, you're not going to believe it. If we go into Sanity, then Schemas, in Post, we can just copy down this title field because it's going to look more or less the same. The name will be Description or lowercase. The title will be Description with the first letter in uppercase. This is just a label that we see on top of the text input field. The type of string means it will just be an input field in HTML terms, as opposed to a text area or file attachment or a drop down list. That's it. You'll see mine have just auto populated. It's not AI at work, unfortunately. I was doing a trial run beforehand and it must have saved the data. You'll have to fill in the blanks yourself. All right, moving on. To fetch the information, we need to go into Sanity, Lib, and then Queries. In our post query, we just need to add the description and you can add it anywhere really. I'm a bit OCD when it comes to things like this, so I like to keep it in the order as they appear when you're creating the post. You can do it however you like. Now we just need to display it in our post component. And it really is just as simple as adding post.description in a p tag here. Mine is coming up straight away because it was probably cached during my trial run before recording this. If yours is not coming up, try adding export const revalidate equals 30 or 60 below your imports. This is a Next.js thing. You can put it in either your layout or pages, and it means that the cached data will be checked or revalidated and cached every whatever time you set. The unit is in seconds, so setting it to 60 means the data will be cached and revalidated every 60 seconds. So you may have to wait a minute before it shows up. Then let's understand sanity queries a little bit more as we make our homepage look a bit prettier. If we console log the posts we're getting back, the data we're getting back is a whole mix of things. Some in plain English strings, some as reference numbers, and some as objects. To demystify what is in these objects or in the fields in addition to the reference numbers, you can find everything you need in the relevant sanity schema files, or you can console log into each layer, or maybe even search more generally online or ask ChatGPT. But the first option is probably the most reliable option. The immediate problem we're trying to solve here is how do I get to the author's name if the data is only returning with the author's reference number and type? This is how. We go into our queries file and in our posts queries, we add curly braces at the end of the query here, meaning we're about to write out an object. It's in JSON format, so the key will be in quotation marks and the value is more of a sanity grok language format. Fairly straightforward. If we're telling Grok to return specific data like this, we'll run into problems because it will now only return what we're telling it to return. So there are data we need at the front end that we need to add in specifically now. I'll also add in some additional entries that I want to have later on. I want to have the created at field to show the date. We'll need the title. I'm not going to put the description here, but if you want to show the description for the home page, you should add it in. We're going to need the slug, main image. And here's how I would make the display of images a bit easier. I'm going to add a key called image URL. You can call it whatever you like. And it's going to give me main image dot asset and the URL. And finally, the body. 
actually, we probably don't need the body in our posts query. I'll keep this in for now in case you want to use it, but I think I'm going to delete it after the video. So back in our posts component, if we console log posts now, you can see we've got the image URL and the author's name instead of reference numbers. Let's add it in. I'm just going to play around with the layout of this page really quickly. I'd like to have it as a grid, one column for small screens, two columns for medium sized screens and three columns for large screens. And down here, we can add the author's name in a P tag. If there is an image, we'll add an image here. Set width and height. And as these images are the largest content for paint, which means they take the longest time to become visible on the page, we can add priority here. This is a Next.js perk, which simply prioritizes these images for loading and thereby speeding up the loading time. And I'm going to rearrange how each of these tags show up on the page to make it look neater and then add in the created at date. The way I'm setting up the layout of this page is inspired by Substack, very minimalistic, no nonsense. And the next question you might have in mind is whether we can turn this into a newsletter like Substack. Sanity actually has a case study of how Morning Brew uses Sanity to enable omni-channel distribution. As you may expect, they're using it at a commercial level, so it's a bit more sophisticated, but they've been able to add options to copy email HTML and to send it to an email service provider that they're using. I'll add the link to the case study in the description below. That's all well and good and very sophisticated. Can you do it at a personal project level? I want to say yes. I've not fully thought this out yet, but two challenges that I can foresee at the moment is how do you get it in a email HTML format and at which point and how do you send the emails out? I reckon we should be able to get the email HTML fairly easily and then we might be able to just add a button to the Sanity Studio next to publish on click of which it sends the email HTML out to people who have signed up or to what we have pre-populated. If the button solution works, we can use something as simple as NodeMailer instead of a more commercial email service provider. Um, very interesting. If you're interested in how we can develop this further, let me know and I'll think about this a bit more. But back to what we're doing now. In terms of adding in the created at date, I'm going to add it here with the author's name in a similar style to Substack. As you can see, we have the date and time as an ISO string, which is not very easy to understand. So we just need to write a short converter to convert it into the date format that we want. For something like this, we definitely don't need third party packages. JavaScript's to locale date string method of the date instances is more than enough. We set the locale first. I'm in the UK and prefer the British date format. So I'll put en-gb here. And then I'm going to get the date in numeric format, the month in abbreviated format and the year in numeric format as well. I like being able to see the year, so I always put it in. And all we need to do now is to add our date converter function into the line with our created at date like this. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to add in the header and a nav menu bar now to get it looking like this. If you want to stick around to see what I do, please continue. Otherwise, that's all for today. We're going to get into how to fetch content by a certain category next time. I hope you'll join us for that. If you're leaving, goodbye for now. And if you're staying, let's continue. 
Let's do our header component first. We'll have a new file in our components folder and call it header. Then we can just take our h1 tag from our home page and paste it into our header file within a new header tag. Like that. Let's say a top and bottom padding of six and a bottom border for the header. We can then remove the py10 from the h1 tag. To see what it looks like, we can come into our layout file and add it down here, just above the children. The reason why we put it in our layout file like this is because this way it will show up in all of our pages, not just the home page. The font size looks a bit intense now. Let's knock it down a notch. I think that looks better. Now the nav menus. We'll have a new menus file within our components folder. Usually the navigation links for a blog tend to be the home page, maybe the categories, maybe an archive and maybe an about page. I'm going to add it at the top here as an array of objects with a path name and a name. You'll see why I'm including the path name in a second. I'm going to hard code the category of how to for now. Realistically, we would do this in a dynamic way. So for each category that we create in our Sanity Studio, it would automatically appear on here. We'll be going into it next time. So for now, we'll just write it down like this. Fantastic. Now we can map out the menu items. We'll show it as a link. The href will be item.pathName and we need a key, which can either be the path name or the name or the index number. My habit is to use the index number, but you don't have to. Each path name and name should be unique enough. And the text displayed will just be the item name. You can either put this menu in the home page, which will only appear on the home page, or in the layout page, where it will appear on every page you have, like the header. I think they're both good options, and I can see arguments for either, so it's up to you really. I'll follow Substack's way of only having it on the home page and keep each post as clean as possible. Okay, let's add some color to this menu bar. First of all, we want to give it some padding and then put it in a horizontal flex box aligned center in both the X and Y axis and with a gap of four. That looks great already. Now for each link, if we're on that page, I want the text to be orange with an underline similar to Substack. To do this, the class name for the link needs to be conditional, so curly braces with backticks. To get the actual path, we need to do const path equals use path name from next navigation up here. And back down here in our link, if the actual path is equal to the path name of our menu item, we want the text to be orange 600 underline underline offset eight and and maybe a decoration of two which is a thicker line than the regular underline and we're going to see an error because we haven't added use client at the top here that's okay all right just one last bit there's a lot of lines going on at the top here so let's add another one i'm going to add a bottom border to the menu bar here it's okay because I'm going to remove the one under latest posts and add a top and bottom padding of 10. 
that's it. This is what we have now. Let's have a look at Substack and compare. Not too bad. We'll keep working on it. See you next time.